I can remember at like six and seventh grade thinking I would marry him. I just knew. Always treat everyone fairly. And he was always looking out to how he could help other people. He was my little brother, but he acted like a guardian, and a caretaker. Parker was a healthy 21-year-old. He had his surgery, this is important, he had the surgery done the same day as his sister. I sent them both home with the same medication. Parker took less. Thursday and Friday did well. On Saturday, he went to his parents' house. His sister was laying on the couch. He's kind of laughing at me because I was so sick and he was feeling fine. So he's like making fun of me. Went to bed, he woke up about three or four. He took a pain medicine then because it was starting to hurt. The other medicine wore, had worn off. I think it was just part of one. I think it was just a half, so. I woke up before him and so I just walked past the bed and over to the vanity and I was telling him, I just told him, Parker, it's time to get up, you know, we gotta go. And he was gone already. I awoke to a phone call from my mom. I just, I couldn't believe her. I, I thought, you know, this, this can't be, this can't be true. And then I had to go tell Dallin. We didn't say anything, we just stared at each other crying. And I could hear my other brother in the background crying. He's buried just down the road, so sometimes when I go by, it just sucks my breath away. I didn't understand, like, why it wasn't me. Everything we were gonna do, all of his dreams, my dreams, seeing him be a dad, I just feel like everything just got in the casket with him. It's a simple tonsillectomy. Who dies from a tonsillectomy? Yvonne, uh, his mother, started to find out some of the issues that were going on. Uh, we started talking about, she came to me and asked me if I would help her. They presented a bill before the state and they called it Parker's bill. It was a resolution that, that would, would cause the state to uh, do a, a study. As we took it through the Senate and through the House, I don't believe we had one negative vote. For me, that was kind of a hard experience, but a good experience thinking that there was a solution to this so other people didn't have to go through the, the same type of pain. It haunted me. If you're in a hospital and you're on one of our floors and we're giving you pain medication, we insist that you wear a pulse oximeter all the time. So the thing I could do at that point not knowing what else to do was to try to send every patient home with some type of monitoring. So Maddie had found out, someone had contacted her and said, my friend um, almost died like your husband, but she was saved. You know, she was rushed by ambulance to the hospital and she was saved because Dr. Canton had sent her home with a oxygen monitor. Last time I saw was 3.52 a.m. and the Oxygen said 40%. The machine was alarming. They were able immediately to give her CPR and call an ambulance. They'd get me back and it opened my eyes for a second. I'd close them again and there went my pulse another, again. Like I was gone, so they'd start CPR again. And you know, this went on several times. And she, she lived. She lived because Parker died. Hearing that it helped her was something that I was proud of, and I know it's something Parker, Parker would do over again. He just, that way, he would do whatever it took to save another person, even if it was his life. I don't know, those are some things I come up with in my own mind to help explain <laughs> why he's not here and how we can get through another day without him here.